Hello everyone, today I'd like to share a literature review on diffusion convolutional recurrent neural network data driven traffic forecasting. It is published as a conference paper at ICLR 2018 and I think it's a very interesting and valuable paper on traffic forecasting with the learning approach. My review will be presented in three parts. The first part is the motivation of this paper. And then from the motivation, I want to have a closer look on the methodology. And last but not least, I will introduce some of, some of the favorite part of the empirical study in this paper. Now let's begin with the motivation. The problem setting of this paper is that given historical data and network structure, we want to derive prediction in certain horizon. For urban road network traffic prediction, there are some challenges we have to face with. The first is the complex spatial dependence. As you can see, the traffic pattern among road segments with close Herculean distance seem to vary. For example, uh, the road 1 and road 2 is uh, very close to each other and their traffic pattern seems, to, seems similar. But for row 1 and row 3, they also have a close Herculean distance their traffic back pattern is extremely different. Another challenge is that nonlinear temporal dependence in rush hours or instant, because in this time the non stationarity phenomenon will be happen to the uh, traffic flow dynamics. And there is also some challenges about the long term forecasting because the traffic uh, speed fluctuates severely in long horizon. To with these challenges, the paper introduced several procedures, and here is the overall structure. To fix with the complex spatial dependence, the diffusion convolution is uh, introduced, and then the current neural network is used to model the nonlinear temporal dynamics. And at the last but not least, encoder decoder architecture exact to uh, boost the traffic prediction performance and deal with the long-term prediction problem. This is the overall structure of this paper. Now let's have a closer look at uh, each part of this paper. Now we will have a closer look on the methodology. At first, we will have a review on diffusion convolution. Literally, diffusion process is a Markov process considering continuous time and state. And this paper wants to model the stochastic traffic flow dynamics with diffusion process. What they do is to try to use a random walk on graph with the star probability alpha and state transition matrix. And in order to model the stochastic traffic flow dynamics, the state transition matrix is calculated based on a degree matrix. Degree, uh, degree matrix multiplied, multiplied with a uh, weighted adjacent matrix. In my view, the intuition of this application is that the traffic state of each row will have impact on other row segments in the row network, especially on topological connected ones. Thus, the, the diffusion is used to characterize the reachability and level of this impact. And then we have a uh, a uh, look on the formula of diffusion convolution. This is the diffusion convolution uh, from the paper. Uh, here, theta are the param uh, filter parameters to trade. Wij is, is the element of a weighted adjacent matrix, which is calculated by a Gaussian kernel, and x, which is the input, n for number of nodes, p for feature dimension of each node. The formula is hard to explain directly. Now let's give an example to explain better. Let's take this part and, and unfold it to three parts. As you can see, if k equals to three, it can be unfolded in three parts. First, we will have a look of this, uh, this part. Here, this a scalar a scalar theta is directly multiplied with the input. This indicates that for the for a certain target road, if we want to predict its traffic flow, and we will we will consider its old traffic feature. 
And the second part where it k equals to one is saying that if we merely consider nearest downstream neighbor of this uh, of the target road, what is the level of influence any other low segments will, will have on it? This is the as you can see, if this is the uh, target road segment that we want to predict traffic flow, and here is is here is the uh, the downstream neighbors of this road segment. We would this part is to use to characterize the uh, level of Dix row segments on Dix target segment. And the third part of Dix formula is, is similar. It, it considers if we consider the second nearest neighbor, down, downstream neighbor of Dix row segment, what's the uh, impact it will have on the traffic prediction on the target row segment. And noted, in, in this way, the information from downstream of the target growth segment is incorporated according to topo topological distance. And, and you can also say it is the transition probability in diffusion process. And with this two part, the diffusion convolution is used to uh, model the two direction information from each, each row segment. For the first, for, for this part, because DO is the out degree matrix of the graph, so the, the, the sum of this of this is to try to uh, incorporate the downstream three neighborhood information. And DI is the in degree matrix of the graph. So in this way, he can come he can consider upstream three neighborhood information. It should be noted that there have been some useful approach to model graph using deep learning approach, one of which is spectral graph convolution. And this paper also emphasized spectral graph convolution. So now let's find their distinction or similarity. Now let's have a review on spectral graph convolution. First, Given degree matrix D and adjacent matrix W on a graph, the normalized graph regression is calculated in this way, and the eigenvalue decomposition on the regression is calculated in this formula. It should be noted that the normalized graph regression and the corresponding eigenvalue decomposition are the fundamental parts of spectral graph convolution. Then the graph convolution for two signals on graph G with graph Fourier transform is defined as follows. And you can see this one is the graph Fourier transform for signal H, while this one is the graph Fourier transform for F. And the multiplication between this and this gives the inverse graph Fourier transform. With this, we can do graph convolution in uh, for in Fourier domain and then turn, turn them back to the uh, graph domain. And here is the core of graph convolution neural network. In this formula, the graph Fourier transform for filter is uh, parameterized, which is now is the parameters to train, and this one is the graph Fourier transform of an input signal. This is the formula which is proposed by this article. And then in the following paper, the convolutional neural networks on graphs with fast localized spectral filtering, the train parameters is replaced by a polyminal function. And then we have a formula that appear on the paper we review today. Now we have come to the formula in the paper from classic spectral graph convolution. A little mathematical transformation will be done here. Plug Dix into the formula and we can see that Dix part can be simplified to the summation of graph Laplacian to the power of k multiplied with a filter parameter. In addition, by utilizing trapsef polynomial function approximation, we can escape from calculating the exponentiation. Then a higher computation efficiency is gained. Also, 
What should be noted is that the norm graph Laplacian should be scaled to the uh, to minus one to one. And if given to the maximum eigenvalue, the graph Laplacian x consider x can be calculated as this. And now we can see how the spectral graph convolution is similar to the diffusion convolution. This is the, uh, the simplified, this is the... Here, with the scale graph Laplacian, the this part can be broken into the summation of this. And as you can see, the factor here is very similar to the diffusion process. In fact, the spectral graph convolution is similar to diffusion convolution on undirected graph. That's to say, while the spectral graph convolution only considers the undirected graph, the diffusion convolution is similar to it in the undirect uh, is in the undirected graph, but it also it, it can also constitute two directions. That's the uh, advantage of diffusion uh, convolution compared to the spectral graph convolution. And after modeling the spatial dependence with diffusion convolution, we can embed diffusion convolutional layer to traditional GRU unit. And in this way, the overload structure can model the temporal dynamics of urban road network. Now we have finished the review on methodology and then we come to the empirical study review. In this part, I want to introduce uh, some of the empirical study that give me deepest impression. The first is the validation section. The paper used three evaluation metrics, including MAE, MAPE, IMSE, which is the normal metrics that used to test the model performance and two real-world large-scale dataset is used for validation. In addition, six baseline in different prediction horizon is implemented for the model comparison. And at last but not least, two specific model validation is conducted. I think this is the most critical part in this validation, since with DCIN, we are no specific spatial consideration is presented in this way, the validation can test the uh, spatial dependence, the importance of spatial dependence. And with DCIN, where specific temporal consideration is mixed, and with this, we can test the temporal dependence, the import, we can test the importance of temporal dependence in, of, for the model. Then we come to another interesting part of this empirical study, that's the interpretation of the model. Since the deep learning is uh, most likely to be regarded as a black box and the interpretation of the deep learning is very really, uh, critical for domain application. Here, the paper visualized the uh, the ways the after tr after train the parameter, and then we can see that the the ways are localized along along around the center and diffuse alongside the network. You can see each picture. And this is the target uh, segment to predict traffic flow, and its prediction has very close relationship with this upstream and downstream its surrounding segments. Thus. It is. Uh, it it can be explained that the prediction of a target road segment has a close relationship with its surrounding segments. That's the implementation of the model, and I think this is very. Here is the overall review of the paper. As far as I'm concerned, such a review is beneficial because in this way I can have a deeper look into the world of others and inspire my own research. I hope I can keep uh, sharing this in the channel and looking forward to the discussions and suggestions from you guys. Thank you.